perspectives, different views, one voice. Welcome to the Perspective Podcast. My name is Cam. I'm in the studio with Ali, Chris, and Kojo. Today we're going to be discussing diversity in TV and film. So let's uh, let's get started in this discussion. So we're talking about diversity in TV and film. I think the, the, the discussion starts from um, an initial documentary by Reggie Yates called TV's Black Renaissance, where he went to Hollywood and he met a number of different um, writers and actors in black black actors and black writers in, in Hollywood. Um, one of which he met was Nina Waite, who wrote The Shine. I guess to start, there's, I guess one would say there's been an influx of um, black driven productions um, in Hollywood over the past few years. So to name a few, you've got Atlanta, you've got Insecure, you've got The Shy, and the point I'm trying to make is that you we're seeing some form of diversity in terms of more black productions being made, so you're getting more writers speaking about um, things from their perspective, being able to speak about um, sort of their experiences, so it's not just the stereotypical view, stereotypical roles of, of most common black characters that you may have seen, like you say, in the early 90s or even like years, decades prior to that. Mm. And um, and I think I think that's where the discussion is. What I guess what sort of what effect that's sort of having now because you can even bring up movies as well, like Black Panther, um, you know, being one of the you know most prominent movies with it was a ninety percent black cast. Yeah, you know, and it made a billion. And then, but then, but then, does that does that really what does that do for diversity in film? Do you that's know, a question. For, for me, <clears throat> diversity in film brings up a lot of things. For me, the word the key word is that representation as well. Because for me, it's that if you're saying it's diversity in what media, film, whatever, TV, you've got to represent what the world is like in the location it's in. That's the, to be honest, maybe because I actually studied film and media, so and maybe because I actually am very observant, certain things like that is very important for me. So when I see stuff like the location, like I pick up on like geography is a big thing for me. I like cultures, different cultures as well. I feel like um, when they do a film, let's say now they based it in a certain city. For me, directly because I might have studied a little about that city, I'm trying to pick up things that are synonymous with the city and the cultures in that city. Now, when I when I see certain things, and the film goes against what is typical of the city. It, that's that's when I feel like that's where we discuss diversity. Do you see what I mean? Because they will do stuff like obviously the big ones that everyone talks about now, the stuff like Gods of Egypt. In yeah. modern terms, yeah. we've shown an all white cast with a film based in Africa. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. things like that. That's just a, a, a obvious throw. But I'm talking about down to the depth. So if you're gonna do like a, a social realism film in Paris. I want to be seeing North Africans in the film. I want to be seeing, do you see what I mean? I want to be seeing a certain type of French spoken in the film, do you see what I mean? I want to be seeing what kind of food they eat because I know this is what builds the, the world you're in, that you're watching. Just like if you're doing a film in London, we know as Londoners what you're expecting to be seen in the film. And if, it, if they're not showing certain things, like the tube or whatever, do you see what I mean? You're going to think, you're not really showing London. Like, you're not showing the diversity of what London... Do you see what I mean? You think that's all come about from a demand from audiences to see more... The thing is, sort of things with in TV. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think because... I think there's been a running theme through, through, through since Hollywood started, especially Hollywood. Mm-hmm. There's a running theme of how things are going to be directed, how things are just going to go. Even when they try to do the typical, let's do a story from the other side a story of a, of a, not a rich person or just someone from a lower social status. It's just typical how, it's almost that, like, yeah, we're going to do the street story, but they'll have like a, 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 a rich saviour. Do you see what I mean? To just change their life or, do you see what I mean? These kind of yeah. things. So I think there's, 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 just, there's just too many running themes, but now people, because people study more, people want to know about the world more, you have to change it up. 
And I think Hollywood, the reason why we've seen so much diversity is it's not because they're thinking, okay, let's just let black people in. It's because, no, they're saying it's no, we have to let black people in. We have to literally switch it up to benefit us because at the end of the day, I've seen even that in other interviews with black actors and black comedians and that, they speak about it all the time. Yeah, there's more black people getting jobs and all of that in Hollywood, but who's eating? I think... Who's actually eating? And it's white Hollywood. Do you see what I mean? I think, yeah, you make some really valid points. When we talk about diversity in TV and film, diversity, we could talk about black women, we could, we could talk about females in general, yeah. we, talk, we could talk about disabled people, we could talk, because diversity is a broader range of things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah you're right. So, I think, I guess for, for, for our conversation, it's more just looking at the black aspect of it. Because, for instance, when you're looking at Hollywood, Hollywood has, for a long time, been racist. Mm. And sometimes it's not that the individual is racist, it's just that the system is racist. Mm. Um, in a sense that this, is, this Hollywood came off from what? Back in the day, slavery days. If yeah, you yeah. if you don't yeah. if if you remember watching yeah, slavery movies, um, you have they will play a caricature of a black person. Mm-hmm. So you have a white person that will paint them. They will paint their face black, mm-hmm. and they will paint they will paint like a lipstick around yeah, their lips yeah, 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 and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. They, they're the men, those, those type of representation. So they've played that for a long time. Mm-hmm. So obviously, over generations, as human beings are, you are. Or white people are going to have a circle of more white people than black people. Mm-hmm. And through influence and through association, mm-hmm. the people that will come after them will most probably be white. Yeah. If you remember the whole Oscars, Oscars white or something about yeah, 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 yeah. Oscars so white. And when they were doing the stats about the committee yeah, yeah, that yeah, sit yeah. down to vote what movies um, have done well in order to get an Oscar mm-hmm. or whatever, or what actors should be recognized for getting an Oscar. I think about 95% of them were from white Caucasian backgrounds and stuff so obviously when you're looking at some of these things then you can see that sometimes it's not necessarily that the the individual it's just that more of the system now obviously when you're looking at them you're looking at the background of these people some of some movies is is going to be more attractive to them not attractive but they're going to it's going to resonate more with them because of their background so even if they're a producer or a scriptwriter they're going to write for their environment or yeah. people around them, right? Yeah. So, of course, you're not going to get that diversity. So, if you can imagine from that, the producer is going to sponsor something that re- resonates with them. The writer is going to write something around their environment or how they see it, mm-hmm. because that's the thing. I could live in this environment, but if I don't see this environment to be multicultural, if I'm writing a screenplay, I might not necessarily represent that in my screenplay. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, down when that goes down to the actors, you're only going to pick actors to represent what that screen what the screenplay is. So, for instance, if there's no representation or if there's no diversity, then you're not going to get a black person or the Asian person or the female or the, or the black female to play those roles. Mm. So all those type of actors and actresses in the market, they're not going to be getting a lot of jobs coming their way because a lot of the screenplays that are being written are not for them. Mm. So I think that's quite evident. In I was listening to Idris, Idris Elba. Mm. I think he addressed the parliament three years ago and he was talking about diversity in TV and film. And he was talking about his experience and why he even went to, to the US in the first place. He wasn't getting anything yeah. here, was he? Yeah. He wasn't. So what he said was that it's not necessarily that he wasn't getting anything here, but he wasn't getting more. He was just being, he was playing stereotypical roles. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't an extensive of roles that he could play here. So he had to, at one point, make a decision to say, if I want to be on the scale of people like Denzel Washington, mm. then I need to do something different. Yeah. Because a lot of the screenplays, a lot of the um, series or movies that are being written in the UK are not being written for people like me. Mm. Hence the reason why I had to um, make that transition. So I mm. think when we talk about diversity, we have to, we have to understand, I guess, I'm, I always like going back to how some of these things are being played out. But I feel like, as you're saying now, in regards to like, um, um, what's his name? Reggie Yates documentary, what you can see is that people through social media are making their voices being heard. So before, it's not necessarily that people did not see this, mm-hmm. but you didn't have the medium to really, to really voice your frustration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, because who, who, what newspaper are you going to go That's to? True. Now you have individuals that could post stuff, and other individuals that agree could then start making that trend, and that will become popular conversations to be had. So I feel like quote-unquote, social media and how social media is being played out now is part of the reason why, 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 why we're getting yeah. the, this type of that's a very um, conversations point. as well. Yeah. We'll push it for the social media as a voice for the 
the what's it the unheard basically yeah that's what it, yeah that's really what it is it pushed it but yeah man I think it's just time for a change obviously naturally there there has to be a change um but I feel like yeah Hollywood and just just TV and media just capitalized off of the, the, the basically the variations and the differences that's happening now. Yeah. And that's all they're doing. They're just seeing it as, all right, we can't beat you, so we'll work with you, but just make money off you because we're the powers that be. So it's like, we know we have to let... It's just that for me, it's just that US sport, you more you, you see it in sport, but especially US sport, like for me, like NBA, NFL, like sometimes I look at them guys and I, and it might be harsh, but and I've seen some of them say it. You, you do feel like the way they even talk about them is it's not modern day slavery, but just how they talk about them like they're cattle. Do you see what I mean? Like as sports stars and all of that, like 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 when Trump was that, like, I think Trump or one of the politicians said to them to shut up and play ball type stuff. Like they get told those things and it's like, yo, yeah, you're worth this, you're worth this amount of money, but you're just money to us. We don't care about your, your your trauma that you had from when you were young, that watching your dad die and things like that. We don't care about all of that. We just care that you're going to win a championship for us this year. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you mentioned that about even talking about the powers that be, because um, I guess in those structures, as you said, um, it's, it's, it's predominantly you know white. So it's you know anything, white males. <clears throat> anything that's you know being done, even that supports some form of diversity, they're 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 making money off it. But it's interesting because it's like, you know, um, what's the guy who directed Black Panther? Ryan Coogler, that's it. Mm. Ryan Coogler. He, um, his first movie, Fruit Bell Station, see, that was produced by uh, Forrest I've Whitaker. Seen that, so man. that was for a black, you yeah. know, um, a production movie. company. Yeah. And, you know, you see how he's he's grown ever since then, yeah. you know. And obviously he's grown with Michael B. Jordan because yeah. he's put in these movies. Okay. And, you know, I almost kind of see them as like a Denzel and yeah. Spike Lee sort of duo, the okay. way they're working together. Okay, okay. Um, but with that being said, the point I was trying to make with the whole Forrest Whitaker back into production is Lena Waithe, a few weeks ago, who's the writer of The Shy, she, she mentioned that, she mentioned about Denzel Washington and Will Smith getting paid 20 million per movie. And she's propagating that then, because she was like, if I was getting 20 million a movie, you could bet I'd be supporting black yeah. production. Yeah, that's what like, I've she always was thought. That, that she was really getting that's what I've that. always thought, because do you know what it is, yeah? And, and to be honest, even the way I started this all off here, I don't want to be negative and just be going on about Hollywood and just how they're just running this thing. Obviously, with the diversity, the, posit- the positives of it is, from what I've seen, even from... What we're seeing is, obviously, just that when they show you that diagram of, like, a tree, and that basically how... You see the surface and that, but it's the roots. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been seeing this build yeah. up from 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 when I was young, and I knew it was from before. But like the work that people put in from the nineties, I'm talking about black people now. Do you see what I mean? That like, just black people, or even people from diverse situations. You get what I mean? That like, even middle class black people, poor black people. I've just seen basically the media grow. I'm talking about even music, like the the, the Sean. Puffy cones I think, I think that, that add and contribute to these yeah, things that will push that you know black media forward that mm-hmm. he had revolt. Do you see what I'm saying? These kind of things that help black actors, black do you get what I mean? Just yeah. in the media. So for me, the positives of the diversity now is now you see black companies, mm-hmm. you see more black companies. It's positive for the youth. For me, it's not just one of films that Black Panther, this is me personally. It's things like yeah, that come to No, it's a start, but what I'm saying is what we need, for, what I'm saying is, is to link to what I was saying earlier with Black Hollywood controlling things. What we need is films that we could produce ourselves that will be more Black Panthers. So we don't have to rely on Hollywood to bring out a Black Panther amongst one in a whole universe of white, white superheroes. I think, I think so we could do our own universe. Do you see what I'm saying? And a whole, if we had a production company, we could push it ourselves. That's, 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 the, that's the key that's thing. I forgot the name of the the director, but in that Reggie Yates um, documentary, there was one of the directors, she's a woman, I'm not sure what she, I forgot what she's directed, but she mentioned the same point that you made, that yeah. you could talk about a lot of black actors or a lot of black directors that are coming through the pipeline, mm. but if we don't have a black production company, mm. then a lot of these things, you're still going to be going to these executives mm. to be making those decisions, so it really just stops that growth of, of, of 
this whole black media. I think what we have to mention when we talk about stuff like Black Panther, Black Panther is similar to like coming to America. Mm. So it's it's cyclical. It's like once once in the once in a blue moon, you see this black movie that is made and everyone accepts it. And the whole idea from this point is that. Over the generation, now that this has come out, it's most probably bridge a gap and we're yeah. going to have more, st- but that doesn't always work out. Like Samuel that. Jackson said it ain't gonna make no difference. He did, yeah, but a red joint said it, but it I'm make no difference. No, I don't think it will. I don't, I don't think it will. I think, I think what Black Panther did, it just gave people more. I oh, think the it culture, more hope, it's more just the representation though. in black culture was uh, in Black Panther was very key, not just for um, black people. In Western, um, in the Western environment, but Black people in Africa as well, and obviously having a representation that's of a superhero that that you could see yourself yeah. being, right? That's so I think that that was very very important. But I would just go back to the UK. So I was watching a documentary. It was on the YouTube actually. Um, this girl by the name of Lee Green. Um, I think the documentary is called Fear Money or Racism, and um, she starts off by interviewing. An Asian actress, that I think, is now in Midsummer Murders. You know, there's okay. this ITV. I'm not sure if you guys watch it, but uh, there's a, there's a few of these where there, there's there's never been any diversity in that. But apparently yeah, she's that's like proper country, yeah, Midsummer, Midsummer yeah, proper that's country. That, yeah, country. But anyway, yeah, the point that she was making, and I think it's a point that we've made on this show before, is that in regards to diversity, it's almost like the executives that be they see that as a risk. For anything to do with movies, in 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 regards to putting someone like that out there, and they always believe that audiences are not going to um, be yeah. receptive. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To that's what they're scared that. of. So, so apart from some of the legacy um, issues and the, le- the legacy of racism mm. that's become systematic, they also believe that when you put someone of rep- of, of diversity mm. in front of the TV, mm. the viewers are not going to resonate well with that. I think just added to that, the last point I'd like to make is. In that Reggie Yates documentary, the key thing that they said in there is that um, TV streams like Netflix mm. has changed the yeah. change how how yeah how yeah, is, is, Netflix, yeah. that 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 is key because Netflix are taking risk on certain shows with yeah, black yeah, producers yeah, yeah. and black directors, mm. and those shows are being received quite widely. It mm. might not necessarily be in the Western world. Mm. Because if you think of that Netflix platform, mm. there are other people that are watching these. Mm. So now people are, are are waking up to see that oh, so if I do do these type of movies, there are there is an audience. Yeah, for yeah, it. Not yeah. that there hasn't been an audience yeah, for it, yeah, but yeah. Netflix have been taking that risk, yeah, and yeah, which yeah, is then yeah. bucking that trend. And that's why and they that, that's smart. Been and to go back to go back to the to the to the point of um, the should there be a black James Bond, and that's the same thing because we already know that James Bond is a Heritage from UK, for example, and you've got all these actors and the act- um, actresses such as like John B. B. Ogo, that is doing well as a as a young black British actor, and he raised up, he went so high because of what Star Wars, and now there's another upcoming Star. No, it's Wars. actually it's because of Attack of the Blocks. Has it, has it, has it, any, yeah, has I'm anyone w- watched Attack of the Block? It's, no, it's no, a really no, good no, movie. No, it's, 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 it sounds like, like it no, a lot of people love it. No, 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 no. Attack of the Blocks is basically a group of of a group of youths that live in an area, and it's like an alien attack. It's a brilliant movie. That's how I found out. That's how he was casted. That that's how he was initially. Um, yeah, that's what you thought. It was Star Wars that blew him worldwide. Yeah, well, well, yeah, for worldwide. me, my point, what I'm trying to say is... Because the Attack of the Block was just a UK. UK, UK... No, but that's what gave him the platform. Yeah, 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 it did, yeah. Like, like, yeah, yeah. The, like you can tell he's been grinding. But go well, on. What I'm trying to say is, like, UK alone, I don't believe that the diversity is there. For example, you that have East, East Tendons, you have Coronation Street, yeah. you have all of the... That's what it is. It's all, like, very low-key. You get what... Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Um, That's... That's true. I think we should definitely speak about UK when it comes to diversity. Yeah, because I, 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 I do not we've see it. We've been mentioned in the US, but... Right, so, l- l- let's get into the UK. I've got yeah. some stats that can actually help with this conversation. Right, so, in the UK, um, I think the overall population, and I think this is in two years ago when these um, these stats was carried out. So, 13% of the UK population is non-white. 5.3% of the UK film production industry is non-white. So of the 13%, 5.3% in the UK film industry is non-white. 1.5% of television directors are non-white. 
of two percent of people of screenwriters are non white. Um, also, in regards to the BBC, there is no diversity regarding the executives of, mm. of the board. Literally. There isn't any black well, or Asian. And this is something that was carried out in two years ago anyway. So, obviously, when you're looking at some of these stats, I think when, when you talk about representation, the key thing of diversity, I should say, is that when you're looking at a population, so you're looking at a population, if you could watch TV or movies and see 13% of what's coming out on these shows having some sort of diversity in regards to black people representation, mm -hmm. then I guess you cannot really complain that much mm -hmm. because it reflects mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. yeah? But what we're saying here is that if you keep delving down into the TV industry, even in the UK, mm -hmm. you don't have black people in positions to make decisions that would, or even screen, screen write. So if you have 2%, of those 2%, what are they writing? And what they're writing, is it for black audiences? Because what you need to understand is when, and a lot of times you might feel that when you're in an organization, you cannot get the, just, the general culture, mm -hmm. where if you do write something, it might be scrutinized, or you do write something and they might say, oh, who are we going to get to pay this? No one's going to watch There's it. No do you know what I mean? So, so this whole legacy issues of, oh, the audience might not receive it quite well. Oh, that's really good play, but you know, the audience might not receive this well. So we're not going to do Chris's one, we're going to do Cam's one. Do you know what I mean? So even with those 2%, what are they putting up? But I think the reason why diversity in TV and movies is very important because from a long time in regards to representation, black people have played stereotypical roles. So it's either the gangster, either some civil right movement type of movie where it's black people that have done wonderful and amazing things in this world are the ones that movies are being done about. Mm. When you call, when you look at their white type of audience, they're doing movies about someone just waking up one day and feeling great. Mm. We don't get that type of representation of just a normal person, just looking through someone's lenses. Mm. From what's his name, Reggie Yates documentary. I think the key thing that they, a lot a lot of them shows that you're you're talking about now, like the shy and stuff. When you watch it, the characters are actually quiet. It, it tells you about the journey of the character. So it could yeah. tell you that this person might be carrying out around. They might have a gun on them, mm -hmm. but it actually tells you about their life mm -hmm. and so why they as to why. And it really goes more deeper than mm -hmm. just that gangster on the block. Yeah. It actually shows you that the gangster cares, the yeah, gangster yeah. is a father figure, the gangster is looking after their, their, yeah, their, yeah. their brother or whatever. Not. And the film that actually paints that in a really good light, I'm not sure if anyone's seen Moonlight. Yeah, I've seen Moonlight. And it's a wonderful movie. Like yeah, you know what it's doing, it sounds like it's humanizing black people. Exactly, that's exactly. That's what it is. That's the key thing. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And that's the only type of, let's say, quote unquote, gangster type shows I want to be seeing at this age of, of mine now. Like I don't want to be still seeing that. Like, we've seen the whole typical gangster. Like, do you get what I mean? Like, actually, top boy is coming. Back. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> like, obviously, but I'm saying typical. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Like, obviously. Like, 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 those shows are entertaining, but you know when you just always see the negativity? Because for me, Top Boy ain't even about negativity. That's just showing you what London is. Do you get what I'm saying? That's, that's oh, just... But it's a very... But, but, but it's a thing. very small percentage of yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, what should, black should. people are going through in London, yeah. per se. So, Def if definitely. you're looking at... So, yeah, but, but I, showing, wouldn't see, I wouldn't see Top Boy as a positive no, type no, of no, thing. No. It's not even about... It's not about... No, but that's what I'm saying. When it comes to something like Top Boy... It's not whether it's positive or negative. It's just someone's life. Do you see what I mean? It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a, because what is no, it? I'm not disputing that. Yeah, like the problem yeah. I have with that is that it's the reflection. Yeah, it's what TV we keep getting seen on yeah, TV. That's what, yeah, it's yeah. always someone's life in regards yeah, to the yeah, hardship, yeah, in regards yeah, yeah, to yeah, them yeah, selling yeah. drugs and stuff. That is that's not pain. Black people in that life. When you're yeah. having your young children watching some of these things, not that they will be watching it anyway, but. Yeah. You have young people yeah. that are yeah. that that these it's streams are is available to them. So yeah. when they're watching this, they're not seeing anything different. But that's not the life for a lot of black people. It's a small minority you know that, that, that experience that life. Stream. But it's what it keeps getting getting pushed out. And sorry, just no, before no, you come no, in, Chris, no. a lot of the young British directors, I think you know the guy that's done like um um adulthood to um adulthood yeah, and no Noel Clark. Clark. No Clark. When you hear some of the stuff that they've been saying, what they say is that when you're writing and you're not bringing that element of violence and mm. destructive behavior by black people, you're almost not going to get that financial backing. backing. 
But that's because what, that's that is what, what that that you, you can see. It's promote. almost like we've created a pipeline of this distraction yeah, 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 on, on TV, yeah, 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 yeah. and that's all they promote. Yeah, but that's what, what that's what it's, where it is, isn't it? It's just um, the media what they promote. Um, I don't know. For me, obviously, media is my thing, but media is, I could say is my passion. But at the same time, maybe because this is what I studied in college, that for me, sociology is um, mm. my it's my actual real passion. That's, the, that's the, 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 the study, subject, yeah, the study of, of people of in people. groups. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I wanted to do psychology, but it's mixed with sociology. Psychology is just more scientific. Yeah, but it's, for it's, me, it's, not, it's not so straightforward. Sociology for me, because for me, you can connect everything back to sociology. Sociology, yeah. If you I'm actually do it, that like, when you actually study, it's it showed me for the first time in life when I was in college that the breakdown of people in groups and obviously just directly it shows you why they act like how they do just that just from social status everything reverts back to sociology almost Mm -hmm. in the world as humans basically so when i see certain things just in films Mm -hmm. and things like that when i see when i see things in films that in regards to certain things i just think i don't know um in the uk anyway I feel like UK definitely needs to, they need to show everyone. For me, the, 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 core, the core thing that will solve all of this is ideally we, we start having black production companies yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Because what it is, is we need to directly, because we, we know as black people there's different walks of life as black people, there's different types of black people. Do you see what I mean? Just like there's different types of white people, Asian people, Arabs, whatever you want to say. But obviously, we just keep getting represented as a certain type. We get boxed in as a certain type of female and a certain type of male. Do you see what I mean? So, it's and it's never too positive. Do you no, see what I mean? No. It's, and even when it is positive, it's always, there's a negative side to it. To it. Like, so, we, you, we, were, we were negative too positive. But, but do you think that, like... For me, when you've got, sorry, when you've got a, production, a black production company, it because the power you've got is that you can create a whole new world. It's not a movie. This is why I said it's not just a Black Panther. Because Black Panther created a world, but it's a, it's a fictional world. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? When you've got a black company, you can create a realistic world where you can actually change a whole new generation of thinkers. Do you see what I mean? Where you can show them that like, step by step, you can consistently put out movies that will build a next generation where it shows them realistically how you could be positive black males Positive black women. Do you get what I'm saying? But do you that's think? Really but do you, that's what's you think? Do you think things on. like obviously, like we we follow America to some degree. Yeah. So the very so fact is, we're heavily influenced. Yeah, fair, heavily influenced by them. So the mm. very fact that you've got a lot of these black written productions in America, obviously a lot of young kids are seeing a mm. lot of people. This young younger yeah. generation are seeing that now, mm. and I will I'm, I presume that will probably influence them to do yeah. things just the same way yeah. the UK's music yeah. culture yeah. is yeah. built up to the point that's where to say. the point now where. Most most young people I meet don't even listen to American yeah, artists yeah, anymore. Yeah. They just listen to British artists. Yeah. So the culture's built up to that. That's degree. what. I'm, yeah. And, and That's I what like, practice. Yeah. We we built, built our think, culture. I think the, the the reason why production companies become quite important because at some point it becomes a bottleneck, right? So you could have all these directors, all these screen 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 screenwriters, um, trying to produce these things, but they still have to go. To these Hollywood, um, that's what I'm trying to say. To to, to, to get that, funding or to get what? Do you know what I mean? So it means that you're going to get a lot of competition because now you have all sorts of um, black directors or black screen screenwriters trying to get their movie being made. So if everyone, if they have ten people going to one exec, they have to choose one person or one, whatever. That, do you know what I mean? Whereas if you have your own production company, Something as you're like, saying. You could make and not that it's not yeah. good. It's really good to see that because we haven't really seen that type of. I was, um, I was going to mention because you time. made a point about social media, how that's widened, yeah. opened a gap and allowed certain people to do certain things. I was thinking about even like someone like Michael Dapper with what he's doing. I know. Saying. Look at what, what he's, he's doing. doing. With the characters he's written yeah. and the shows he's doing. He that's shows it on the mainstream TV. Yeah. He's, put, he's put it on, that's on YouTube. YouTube. It's all on YouTube. That's what I'm saying. That you've got to think out of the box where. Now I get why some people do say that. Why do black people complain? Just build your own. I know. And obviously, it's yeah. easier said than done. I get it. But when it comes to things like the media, mm-hmm. 
You can. I think it's now is the point. Like no, when but it comes to before it was a bit you. harder, but I think now, no. especially as you give those examples of our, because you could, it's not just even more the comedians been doing the same thing. That's how he got that platform that he's on now no, no, on, on 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 Channel Four. Even someone like what's his name, big big nasty, is he big nasty? Yeah. On Channel Four now, I, so, I, I've I've been around these guys when they were filming, but yeah. when they created that platform on social media mm-hmm. and people saw how funny this guy was, mm-hmm. over time when Channel Four is looking about oh diversity, how can we make our audiences or how can we make our shows a bit more diverse? Oh, we have this guy that's been showing this. That's how they got their breakthrough. Mm-hmm. More the comedian, it's just about that but people yeah. sharing his videos. You got know I me. Mean? So definitely, I agree with that. Now people are at a point now that through social media. They could get that break yeah, that would have doing. never happened. Yeah, that's what they back used in the to like for that. But um, for me, it's, you still yeah, you would have to build your own platform or do production companies like with us. Yeah, but, but what I'm noticing as well, it's not even the diversity is there, right? But UK is not enough. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, do you know what it is what though? Is, do you know what it is though? I've noticed with the UK from what I've US. seen, yeah. Because we're so we're so behind the US yeah. in certain things. I've always watched films, especially UK British social realism films, especially when it comes to black people and all this whole street stuff. I just watch it and I think those those shows don't really grasp the actual depths of what's really happening. No, it just touches London. the face. Exactly, it just and touches do you know why? Yeah. Because for me, again, it goes back to what we're saying. A black guy writes the show. And he says, all right, I want to pitch the show. Now, even when he's screenwriting this or whatever, whoever's screenwriting, they know, they have it in their mind that if I'm pitching a show, I'm pitching it for white people. Yeah. That's who I'm pitching it. So I can start talking real slang like in this and talk like how I talk to my veterans, but I can't do that. I have to tone down the language because this is for the rest of the UK. Yeah. So even when I want to show certain things that really happen in the streets, I can't do that. The world ain't ready for that. Nah, I, I actually, I, I, I actually I, I, feel the opposite. No, I, feel, no. I, feel, I feel like that's the only time they allow you to show that. They allow you to show no, no, stuff in the street. No, 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 that it's like there's more context around that character. So, so, so it's not like that that character is just on the street selling drugs. There's actual proper story behind this and character. And it's not even so just it, the proper story, it's the accuracy that entwines with it. Because obviously... Accuracy in words. So, 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 it's the accuracy of the sense of... That's why something like Shy mm. would resonate so much because... Obviously, if you're from a certain background, you know why certain things happen crime-wise or streets-wise. Because you know that a closed mouth don't get fed or if you, won't, if you don't eat, you're going to starve. Yeah. Those kind of common sense things being from, the, from a certain background. But when you see it in a show, in a UK show, they're just showing you a 16-year-old Senseless violence. So they're not showing you the accuracy that the one hand washes the other. Yeah. So they're not showing you where when I, I was, obviously I haven't seen the shark film, but if I'm gonna show in the UK UK version, yeah. I'm gonna show in a film a mother picking up a check. Well not a check, but basically going to the benefits system. Do you get what I'm saying? Trying to make ends meet. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, and, and no no no, but just for example, getting rejected. And then you 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 have to show things that her telling her child why he can't have certain, do you get what I'm saying? Certain things and all of that. So you've got to show the transition as to why he would change into a character to go out on the street and do that. This is the accuracies. No, 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 but it would. It would. And, and that's why I said certain films, for me, is like that, where I see it subjectively. I don't see it as it's necessarily positive or negative. To me, that's the real reality. Because for me, obviously, with Britain, that's why they've got that whole British social realism. It's it's social realism. Like you have to be real. Do you get what I'm saying? With the social aspect of what's happening, 
right there and then. Yeah, Top Boy is a form of British social realism. I, I know what you lot mean what though. Seeing, you got to remember, we're like a couple of years behind. So they've accepted a lot more in America. Like they, they knocked the door in America. Like they built their whole but culture. Because, uh, so they, but US is accepting that. But you got, yeah, that's my point. Yeah. But that's because you got to remember, they're yeah, more advanced in their own yeah, but, then, but the US are accepting them as well. Because uh, just before you I, come I, in. Because I was going to mention one friend of mine who's an actor, mm. who is, is an actor, and it was interesting because I remember when he was talking to me about it himself, and he was saying that, you know, like, it's crazy. Like, because when, when Idris Elba did Lufa, he was just like, see, this is crazy. Like, you know, you see a black man who's the lead who's beating up all the other people, yeah, you know, just, and you're not, you're not used to no, seeing that in the thing. show. No. You're not used to seeing that sort of lead. And it was just like, for him, that was sort of knocking down the door for like certain other actors, like non, non-white actors to no, lead in roles. Yeah, in so, so even at the point that you were making, Ali, so when they interviewed, um, what's his name, Samuel L. Jackson, so this interview was regarding Get Out. Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it was regarding Get Out, and Samuel L. Jackson made a point to say that he doesn't understand how a black British yeah, person this. can play and a black American in the sense that we do not understand some of the struggles that they're going through. Um, disappointed, but there, there is a bit of element of... But it's true to a certain mind. extent. If you're thinking of what black people in America have gone through, yeah. we cannot, we cannot even comprehend because we don't come from that type yeah. of background. Yeah. So I think I understand that. But I feel in that point, the only thing I had to say about that is that he's an actor. So if you could exhibit yeah, you could those type them, yeah, of behaviours yeah, and emotions, exactly. then that's fine. But the added point that he made to that, what I'm getting on, is that he feels that there's a lot of the influx of the UK um, actors migrate into America. Yes, one of it is to do with not getting a lot of representation of um, the diversity of roles and the opportunities that yeah. they could get in the UK. But then the other part of what he was saying, I seen why they're being picked up so quickly is because they will take less of a wage than an American actor. Obviously, they're hustling. So, so <laughs> what, what, what he yeah. was saying, you know, obviously I understand yeah, that yeah, they have to yeah. start from the bottom, but at the point that he was they making is that they undercut in the yeah, market yeah, yeah. in the sense that when you're upcoming UK <laughs> actor, yeah, yeah. and you've got, you've got, you got, you've got, you got yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so for the, for the producer, no, it did sound like a hater, but I think, me, I, think, I think it's the way he came across because a lot of these points that he made, when you do articulate it, you yeah. could understand no, I could from, understand from, what, from what he was trying to yeah, say. I, I do, what it is about the US, they have, they have the platform and they have the money to, to do this kind of um, shows or TV or, or films. You, but in the UK, there's not, I don't think there's a good directors. Do, do you know why I say it? Because all it is, is all you've got to say is, can them US actors come to the UK and do that? They won't do it. They, not can they. Can they and if we pull off what do you mean can they can they like can they can they do a British accent you mean no that I pull it off where Yeah they could do a British accent. Look they probably could but I'm saying pull it off. Yeah 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 I think they can. I don't think they can. I don't think they can because what you need to understand I don't think naturally I'm talking about naturally if you've never been put in the position, this is what you need to understand. It's just simple as that. They've never had to put themselves in those positions to play that role because Fair there enough. isn't that amount of work in the UK. Fair yeah? enough. So if, if the shoe was on the other foot, then someone could have said, oh, do you think the UK actors could go to America and pull, pull, yeah, up, pull yeah, up their... Yeah. Accent is accent. People yeah. could do it. Yeah. And that's part of acting. You have but to pick you, up these dialects. You know and they go to... You know, they, they have like... They have tutors and stuff. Yeah, just showing them... I know to, that. No, so I think they could do it. It's just that... No, it's just that... The only point that I would say is that they've never been put in that position to do that. But if they were put in that position to do that, I know have no qualms. It's a perfect good budget for UK to have. They're doing well. What's his name? Play James Bond, though. Piers Brosnan. He's a no, 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 it's not about the. It's not. No, no, it's no, not. It's not about the actor. Oh. It's not about the actor. It's about the whole concept of James Bond. James Bond. So, what are you going with this? Because James Bond, right, is an Engl- English heritage mm. movie, right? And obviously, what Chris said, they pick up different locations and 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 film the an actor, right? Mm. So, UK can do that. What do you mean do? I mean, they can do a good movie as James Bond. But were we talking about UK doing a no, good movie? No, I'm talking about or... diversity. I'm talking so about what, diversity. Oh, black James Bond. No, not even black James Bond. The reason why most of these actors, I think my opinion anyway, these black actors that are doing so well, like Idris Elba, um, Lalita, and um, John Diego, or whatever, America has 
a stream where they can they can make a movie as good as Star Wars, for example. Oh, or black film. Yeah, black. not even black film, just in general film, like... Um, blockbusters, you've yeah. been talking about yeah. blockbusters. in that kind of capacity, right? As, as, as UK now, I don't know what it is about them when it comes to making movies. I said, as, as but you're talking about big budget movies, yeah. is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, but they can do it, because... Jane, um, what's it called? Um, James Bond is a perfect example. But my question is, yo, why all these actors, these black actors, as a diversity, why are they leaving them out? Why are they casting them out? Movies order. No, no, I know, but it's, it's the audience don't understand that or what we're talking about. You understand? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, UK can represent a, a good movie. Or even that, sorry, that actor. Yeah. Have you heard of that actor, Damson? Idris Damson? I think his name is Idris Damson. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I've seen him run all from, but. Who did Yeah, he's a snowfall. Oh, oh you? Yeah, 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 from, yeah, apparently yeah. it's meant to be from Campbell, either Peckham or Arsbury yeah, or something like that. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, he's in Snowball. Snowball was on last year when the World Cup was in. He had a Nigerian. Um, oh, yeah, and yeah, my Snowball brother said he used to see him all the time. Yeah, yeah people have said that to me. Man. Oh, like he's from Enzo. Snowball is from Enzo. Yeah, I can imagine because he looked like someone from him. Like, just like, you could just imagine seeing him. Let me get his name. And he's just like. It's just like John yeah, Boyega. Like, when, yeah. when, when I say yeah, John Boyega, Dan, 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 I, was like, I, I was like, yeah, I can imagine yeah, him being prepared. Well. Like, I, and that's for me, that's what the hood has to offer. It's just that it's about directing yourself, like knowing how to focus and directing a, your talent. So, you get what so I mean? yeah, just even added to that. So watching this documentary on um, by The Guardian, by this um, presenter, Lee Green, mm. um, they go to Peckham, so... Oh, so they go to Peckham and there's actually a drama school in Peckham. They went to the drama school that someone like John Boyoga actually went to that drama school in yeah. Peckham. So there is a drama school in Peckham. Oh, so when you're hearing this influx, it's most probably because of that drama school. But then I think one thing that they mention is that there is this um, school called RADA, which is like the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, okay. Arts or something. And that's where all the rest of the UK actors, I think the Caucasian actors, go and um, come from. And they interviewed this boy and girl, and they asked them, oh, what do you think in regards to your trajectory? Do you think you'll be able to get roles here? So, like, they feel, it was very interesting that at that age, they were saying that they feel in order for them to get roles, it has to be by association, so it has to be by the people they know. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, I don't know anyone, so I don't know how I'm going to do this. Where one of them, where their mom even asked them that, oh, if, if you don't make it as an actress, what would you do? And she was like, I don't even know, because this is what I've, what I've wanted to do for so long. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that there is talent in the UK, and as long as you have the gatekeepers not giving people opportunity um, to come through the doors and represent um, and bring diversity to the screens, we're going to have a lot of our talent actually leaving and going to the US and migrating to the US. And it's expected, I think, in every field that you're in, if you're not getting that breakthrough, it's either you say that, you know what, I'm not, I'm not even going to be an actor anymore and you give up or you try to find other avenues. But what you're going to have, the trajectory is, I do not mind that because when you have people like Idris Elba doing that and coming back, it's almost like they set their dummy where someone growing up could be like, you know what, if I don't get a breakthrough here because this person has done it. I'll be able to do that and then come back to the UK yeah. where more doors will be open for me. Yeah, I agree with you, Coach. I think, I think obviously in America, yeah, you're seeing it. You're definitely seeing an influx of black produced um, productions and even like even production studios. I mean, you can mention or studio where I can mention like Tyler Perry Studio. You know, pretty sure it's a studio as well mm. with which he owns, which you know, which is commendable. And for me, I think it's, it starts like that that way that will allow and inspire others to sort of follow suit and do, do the same thing. Obviously, starting those sort of things aren't easy, and you've got to start with funding, and you've got, you know, you have to find someone that believes in your dream and, and your vision, but I feel like with what's going on in America, you know, and to add to that, obviously, as I said, you've got a number of different TV shows that sort of show and reflect the black experience in America, like Atlanta, The Shy, insecure and these are all sort of from young black writers who you know i think with insecure which is written by Issa ray she started off on youtube so that's actually got her big break and um and i think that will sort of filter over into the uk i'm pretty confident that as time goes on as i said even with the whole music industry the way that's built up in the uk i think you're going to see that influx sort of cross over into tv and i think we're seeing it to some degree now as i said like 
you know, on YouTube, like with people like Michael Dapper, who's able to sort of create, you know, write different characters and perform them in these in these shows as well. So I think that will sort of be to the younger generation. I think that will inspire them. Because I think that's what it comes from. It's gonna come from the younger generation who see these sort of things and then it will inspire them to start writing. Because even like my, one of my friends' daughters, she's in a creative writing sort of class. And I was saying to him, well, that's really, really good because he said she's really, really into that. She likes wants to write plays and all that sort of stuff. And I think that's where it's going to come from, for them to see themselves in TV shows that can inspire them and push the next generation forward to sort of create those shows in the UK and movies. Um, for me, diversity, um, for me, it kind of starts from young. For example, when I was at secondary school, I was, I was studying media, mainly drama. And I was getting good grades, but I didn't see. For me, diversity is mainly from starting from young. Because when I was young, I was playing, I was doing drama. I really enjoyed it, but I didn't see where it was going because it wasn't my passion. But however, what I'm trying to say is about diversity. The UK need to open up that more platform and also allow. Because as what Coach mentioned, there's a uh, there's drama school, special school, uh, need school. I mean, special acting school. And when you do go to this kind of drama school, about ninety five percent. Would you agree? About ninety five percent. I think that drama school. They said twenty five percent of the actors are from BME backgrounds. So say my for um so so seventy five for example for patients are going into this drama school and obviously being picked is going to be more of them and for for the fact that less 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 black are doing dramas or or going to university and going to special drama um, acting school is really difficult as well so the diversity starts from there and then the uk alone are not are not how can i say are not accepting or they're not they don't want to open the, 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 the platform or the stream. And then obviously, if do if a black person has opportunity and make a big platform, the first direction they will think of going is to the US, for example. So for me, um, diversity needs to be awoken. And obviously, Black Panther has done that. The Lion King has, um, has raised that up now. And, and I think there's more to come because, for example, um, the guy, the actor, Black Panther, he's, he's going to act a, a new movie, the first um, somewhere, somewhere. Okay. Yeah, he's going to act a new movie, and that's that's a different Asian type of um, of somewhere. So imagine him him doing that, and then you seeing a younger generation are seeing that and saying, okay, there is a, a chance for us. There is a, a a hero over there. What I'm what I'm saying is, diversity is important, and, and especially like. The generation that is out there, especially like Asia side, America and, um, and, and, and Africa in general, we need to open up and what everyone's saying as well, they need to be younger directors, for example, Marcia Martin, she is one of the younger, she's 14, she's a director and um, for her to be doing that mm. is an influence for a younger one as well to be coming up, so I think that's what needs to be done. One thing I hope is that I know a lot of the actors that we have um, a lot of the young black actors that we have going to America, I really hope that, you know, they do come back to the yeah. UK mm. and do things in the UK because I think it's important for those young people that are looking yeah. up to them. Because mm. otherwise, they'll just feel the same thing. Mm. As soon as they get to a certain level or they want to do something, they'll just go to America. Yeah. Mm. Come and act. That's a good point. Um, I feel that with diversity in TV and film and media, I feel that for me, for it to move forward for us, especially in the UK, I think because we're a young market in the UK, we've got a better chance, especially seeing it grow in America and even in other markets like Asia and in Africa. We can actually learn from everywhere, all around the world, and we can build, as it's growing, we can build our own production company as it's growing. Because it's from grassroots now, like especially with, for me, our, the whole movie scene now, it's synonymous with like the music scene as well. So just like UK grime and UK hip hop's grown, I feel like it's gone hand in hand. Just like how you see with Top Boy, like it intertwines with each other. So I feel like they help each other out. The actors 
want to be rappers, rappers want to be actors, as the saying goes. So I feel like um, we can now build our own production company. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but there could be people that will help build it. Do you see what I mean? Like, I watch, I watch um, interviews with people like Mega Man and that, and he shows these kind of things. These, these, pe- these kind of people have discussions that OGs in the music scene show you how you can easily build a media company. And just having the kind of fearlessness to go and do it, they just show you for the youth. And that's all it is. It's, um, and when we say the youth, I don't want it to be like just 16 year olds. I'm talking about people our age as well. We're still considered the youth in this big wide world. I'm, we don't feel like it, but we're, we're literally, I always say, we're the new generation. Basically, we're the, we're the modern day people that will be leaders. We're the modern day leaders. Mm-hmm. We're, the, we're the ones that are coming in now at that age where we're mature enough to be the leaders. If we're talking about kings and how the dynasties move, we're the new kings. If you're actually deepening it, we're the new generation and leaders and kings. We're coming into a certain age. Do you see what I mean? We've developed from adolescence and this is what we should be showing. And we're only going to get older and wiser with it. So I feel like and in diversity, back to that, is the whole thing is we just need to build ourselves. Obviously, I know there's a lot more black actors and actresses coming through, but I just do feel like we need to build ourselves and, and show not just a certain type of um, direction of black people or just a certain representation. I feel like we can build whole new fantasy lands like mm. they did with Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. I want to see more of those type of films, but a black version. I want to see films that talk about mm. black mythology. I want to see films mm. that talk about black history. See how they build a whole new world. Go back could, films that yeah, talk about, about black, black history yeah, be wanna, falsely. Trust me, I want to talk, I want to see, I want to see mm. epic yeah, films yeah, made yeah, of yeah. like the Mali Empire, do you see what I mean? The Benin mm. Empire. I want them to reconstruct. How you yeah, can reconstruct no, yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah, because they're doing for the medieval times. You see what I'm saying? To How you can history. reconstruct a whole series, not even yeah. one-off movies, for these, 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 these cultures and that. I want us to do that. Do you see what I mean? And we're not gonna. Imagine you can't ask can uh, because fun. you can't get you can't screenwrite this and go to a white um, production company and expect them to do this. We got to do it ourselves. So until next time, that's the perspective podcast. You can find us on Instagram at LDN Perspective. You can also find us on Twitter at Perspective LDN. And if you have any topics um, that you'd like us to discuss, then please email us at ldmperspective at gmail.com. Perspectives. Different views, one voice.